So for today's video, I thought we'd take a little bit of a breather from all of the hauls that I've been doing as of late. Your girl has clearly done a lot of shopping, so I thought we'd mix it up a little bit today and instead talk about a topic that I could honestly chatter on and on about to no end. And that is, of course, luxury handbags. And you know, I have been building my handbag collection painstakingly over the past few years. And it is by no means an easy feat to become a handbag in my collection. <laughs> These bags that I'm gonna talk about have all been considered at one point, but for one reason or another, they just really did not make the cut. So I wanted to talk about it today and share with you the 10 luxury handbags that are extremely popular, but I will not be adding to my collection. And so that brings me nicely into a segue to a disclaimer. I don't think I usually would need to do this, but just in case, want to include it because I guess in saying my piece, it may also seem a little bit like a luxury roast or something like that. But this, at the end of the day, is just my personal opinion. If you've got any of these bags, this is not a reflection of me insulting like your personality or anything like that. And if you do take it that way, then I think that's then something to do with you as opposed to me because I'm just talking about the bags. And the first brand that I will be talking about regrettably is Chanel. And there are two handbags that are from Chanel that I'll be talking about, which it pains me to say because Chanel, as you guys may know, is like my old all time holy grail. So the first bag that I'm gonna be talking about is the Chanel Gabrielle bag. Now, the Gabrielle bag was, I believe, released in like 2017, if I'm not mistaken. It was a Karl Lagerfeld bag. It was the newest bag that was released since the boy bag, which obviously was a massive hit. And so since that point, obviously everyone was really eagerly awaiting the next new it bag for Chanel and then the Gabrielle was released. Now, the Gabrielle, from what I remember, had a massive social media push. I know it's marketed obviously like a hobo bag and it's kind of like a catch-all that fits everything and you can wear it multiple ways. What I just don't get really is just the mixture of materials. I mean, where do I start? Because you've got a hard base it's rock solid, I've seen the videos, I've seen it in person, you can knock on it, sounds like someone's knocking at the door. Then you've got a really soft, supple, I think it's calfskin leather body, and honestly, I've seen videos of people showing wear and tear, it does not age well, it like sags in the middle, but the bottom is still really rigid and hard. And then obviously you've got all of the mixed metals, which in itself I think is just confusing. Obviously you could not make the argument that, you know, mixed metals, you can wear it with any hardware, but my fashion choices never, never get restricted to the point where I'm like, oh, I will pair this gold chain bag with only gold accessories. Like the mixed metal thing does not necessarily solve a problem for me. Obviously appreciating the versatility element, I think is probably the biggest selling point for a lot of people. And also I guess mixed in with the price point, I feel like a lot of people think they're getting a lot of bag for their money. But for me personally, I just think I'd rather put that money towards something a little bit more classic. Something that really testifies to that point is the fact that nowadays you really don't see that many people wearing Gabrielle bags. I haven't really seen anybody wearing it on the street. Even when it was big, actually, you saw a lot of people wearing boy bags when that came out, me included. But with the Gabrielle, although it was a massive social media push, it just wasn't reflected in day to day. And obviously I realize this is luxury items that we're talking about, we're not talking about like Adidas superstars. I just don't think in this grand scheme of Chanel bags that the Gabrielle has done all that well in terms of popularity and longevity at this point. So anyways, let's move on to the next bag that is also Chanel and that is regrettably a very, very recent release and that is the Chanel 19. I would say it looks a little bit more classic than the uh, Gabrielle bag because I think it's because, you know, you've got the CC in the middle. It's very, very identifiable in that way and it's got a little bit more of that classic silhouette. It's got that flap, etc. But the big difference is, I guess, the puffy leather that you've got here and the quilting is massive in comparison to the usual quilting that you find on classic flaps or just other, even the new classics. That is one of the big things that I'm finding not so appealing about this bag because 
I think with the big quilting, you kind of need quite like a robust leather so that it puffs out and it looks really voluminous. And although this definitely looks soft and squidgy, it lacks volume. And even in the photos, like it looks saggy. And I just, I just can't wrap my head around buying a bag that is saggy when I buy it. Because if it's saggy now, what's it gonna look like in three years time? And slight tangent, but related. I have looked at classic flaps, vintage classic flaps on places like Vestiaire, you know, other secondhand or reseller websites from the 80s or 90s. And although there is a slight bit of wear and maybe a little bit of um, sagging in terms of the puffiness of some of the quilts, overall, I think it looks pretty good condition and reflective of the decades that the bag has been around. Conversely then, when I'm looking at this Chanel 19 bag and it's already saggy, the leather looks deflated, it looks sad, like the bag just whimpers. I find nothing wrong actually with how the bag looks and I think the mixed metals elements here work better than the Gabrielle, I just don't understand with the Gabrielle, there's like three chains going on with the three hardware. I guess with the quilting, it, it really detracts from the overall look because it just looks kind of saggy and I think it would lose its shape, like I mentioned, over time. And this just looks like you could scuff it so easily with not just marks, but also I feel like if you were to catch it in something, it would just nick the bag so easily. And I just can't get it out of my head that it looks like a sacky pillow. It just looks a bit deflated. And I wish it didn't because actually I think when these bags are made in the tweed, they actually look really nice. I actually think the tweed and the wool material uh, Chanel 19s look really good. And I think in the smaller sizes, even in the wallet on chain versions, those are good. The quilting is smaller, the leather looks more voluminous than the bigger sizes. These bags, like the Gabrielle, they ain't cheap. They're like 4,000 as well sometimes, I think, or maybe even more. So with that in mind, I'd probably buy something a little bit more tried and tested, a little bit more classic. Next up, we are gonna move to Louis Vuitton. And Louis Vuitton is a bag brand that I only actually have one bag from, and that is the Bandoulier, the Keepal Bandoulier. I really haven't considered any of the other releases that Louis Vuitton have made, to be honest. And I think a part of that reason, and I'll get into the bags in a second, is because I feel like Louis Vuitton has just been so overhyped, especially recently in the last couple of years. And one of the bags that I think has been very, very hyped, and I never really understood it, I mean, I did to an extent, but for me personally, it didn't make sense to add this bag to my collection. And that is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull in whatever size. And the reason why I'm not really a fan of this bag particularly is because I just, I just don't understand why you would want from a practicality perspective, from a security perspective, a bag that is just so open and does not have like any pockets. It's got this little pouch thingy here, which I guess you could say, okay, that's like a pocket and you know, you could wear your little pouch, it's like a clutch or something. So you've technically got two bags in one, but I just don't like bags that don't have a pocket. I think a pocket is a necessity to have within a bag and it having a little pouch, that's very nice and fun. And if it had a pouch on top of an inside pocket, that would be quite nice. But from what I understand, there are no pockets inside. There's just this little pouch and just an open cavern. And, you know, can you imagine you put your wallet in there and you're out in the shops and your bag's full and it's just awkwardness. And I just don't think it's that practical. And like I mentioned, massive security concern here. So if you were on the tube, obviously nowadays a bit different. Um, you, you probably have no trouble going on a tube because no one's on them. But back in the day, I'm sure a lot of pickpockets would be able to root into your bag and just grab stuff and you wouldn't have a clue because your bag's just sagging on the floor everywhere. And I just think having pockets, zipped pockets, and even a bloody zip over the top, I mean, I can't imagine how much cost that would have created additionally for Louis Vuitton. I know some people might not be fans of zips if someone just wants like a beach tote or something, but I feel like for a tote which is very much marketed as like a working woman's tote for on the go, busy lifestyles, I think a zip somewhere wouldn't have gone amiss. It's a very basic bag. There's not much going on in terms of 
like interiors obviously there's no zips there's no real pockets organization that kind of thing you've also got the materials then it's just fully canvas aside from a few leather trim details which obviously is reflected in the price it's a very accessible price point which i think is one of its biggest selling points and obviously that is because a lot of the bags that they make majority are predominantly canvas and then you've got leather details um but i feel like in the same way i feel like the canvas from louis vuitton as of late has had has faced a lot of criticisms and a lot of scrutiny because i think they've changed the formula <laughs> or how they make the canvas even potentially the factories and people have noticed bubbling and cracking and so they've had to have their bags sent back and that's just not ideal is it then aside from the canvas point i feel like with the parts that are leather so you've got the um handles obviously a bit of the trim i'm personally not a fan of the look of patina and i know this is one that's each their own not everybody's cup of tea but uh, that is actually why I got my Keepal Bandulia in the monogram Eclipse. I think the black and I think even the dark blues and even the uh, Damier Ebin, the leather doesn't change color. It's how I bought it all those years ago. It's still like that now and hopefully it will still be for the many years left to come. Conversely though, on the very classic monogram bags with the light trims, I know a lot of people do buy these types of bags for that patina and they like that honey color that happens over time. But I feel like to get that really even patina, you've got to be so, so careful with how you use the bag, the exposure to the sunlight or to the other elements that can all affect how it looks and to get an even patina you've got to be extra extra careful with those and i'm just not that kind of person so bag number four now and we are still on louis vuitton this is the only other bag from louis vuitton that i have in this video and that is a bag that was a very recent release it was everywhere you probably all know this bag and could not stop seeing it all over social media and that is the Louis Vuitton multi pochette accessoire. This bag was so hyped, it was everywhere. I think the resurgence of the multiple utility bag belt thing just came about with Louis Vuitton releasing this particular bag. Then you saw offshoots from loads of other brands. And this bag was just marketed everywhere on every big social media influencer you could not stop seeing it and i think that in itself was one of the big reasons why i was put off from this bag i was just seeing it overhyped so much that it just wasn't that appealing anymore especially when you realize that these bags are gifted to all these big influencers you realize hang about these people are getting it for free why do i have to pay then although i understand and appreciate its utility practicality Again, also the price point, it was just oversaturated for a very, very long time. And I feel like it's kind of on its way out, especially now that I think LV is personally, in my opinion, overdoing it a lot with the recent releases of bags, which are just going along this multi pochette theme. I've seen so many offshoots of their classic kind of pouches now turned into that utility multi pochette. But I think it's gotten to a point now where it's like, mm, no, you should have just you quit while you're ahead and just keep keep with this bag and then what's so special about your pochette when also every other brand is doing the same thing and then another point that i probably should mention in my reasoning is that i'm just finding that a lot of the accessories that they put on the side so you know you've got this little coin pouch here you've got a, a little pouch in front of the bigger pouch here realistically you are probably going to put a lot of your stuff in the big pouch and it's probably just going to be the big pouch that you use i don't know what you'd possibly put in this coin purse i don't carry coins anymore sometimes for a shopping trolley i'll bring a one pound coin but i'm not just putting a one pound coin in here i'd much rather just put it in the main pouch because you know can you imagine going to the trolleys and having to fiddle up here or whatever you're putting up there you could put your oyster card i guess in there but you can't beep it and also it's such a small size that i just don't think a lot of things would be able to fit and also you can't have something that has so much depth in it because then it would just bulge out and it would just look really weird because it's meant to look flat i could go on and on as you can tell but yeah i think you'd probably use the big pouch the little pouch you might be able to put your phone in it if it's not a massive phone otherwise you'd have a problem um and i don't think you'd be detaching a lot of things and changing the look up even though that's also a big selling point and it's part of like the versatility and the utility of this bag i would just be wearing it crossbody 
I can't imagine me detaching the bag each time and wearing it over my shoulder with the metal chain and then wearing the little pochette for a night out or something. I've got bags for all those purposes. And also I think it's got that patina thing that I was talking about earlier, which I'm just not that much of a fan of. If they made this particular bag potentially in the uh, monogram Eclipse, I may be open to looking at it. But again, like I mentioned, I don't really want to have to faff with like deconstructing my bag to wear it. Um, and, and that feature would be lost on me because I kind of just want my bag to stay relatively the way it is. And maybe, you know, if the strap elongates, that's helpful, but I'm not gonna really wear the coin purse separately or turn it into a belt bag. I think it's a bit clunky looking to make it into a belt bag. I've seen it done, some people can pull it off. I wouldn't necessarily take advantage of all of the functionality and, you know, that that would be lost on me so bag number five now and we are changing luxury brands to dior and i've got two bags from dior that i will be talking about now the first bag i don't think will be any surprise to you because a lot of people i think share the same opinions about this particular bag and that is the dior saddle bag obviously this bag you know it has had a massive resurgence since i believe the 80s that it was initially released. And for those of you out there who had the bag initially when it was released and have just sat on it, kept it, you are rolling in it because these bags I think are going for like two, three grand probably for the vintage ones. It's just a testament, isn't it? To the fact that trends come around. So anything that you have really, like the dad sneakers or big bags or micro bags or whatever, they all have its time in the limelight and they all come back around at some point. The big resurgence I think was probably two years ago and it's maintained. So, you know, the fact that the saddle bag is still big is, is a good sign. It means it's less trend compared to some of the other bags that I feel like are very trendy that Dior releases. Now it is obviously inspired a lot by equestrian heritage, hence obviously the saddle bag. But to me, all I see is a kidney or a maxi pad and when you see that you cannot unsee it joking aside because of that particular shape i also don't think you'd be able to fit a lot of your essentials in it because from what i've seen they have multiple sizes but in the smaller size because of the way it's shaped inside it's got kind of like ridges on either side which makes the opening smaller I don't think a lot of people can fit their iPhone in it. And to me, I feel like bringing your phone is quite essential. You know, that's the point of bringing a bag to carry all your bits. So the biggest bit, it just can't carry. It just defeats the purpose. It's not that practical in its size, the fact it can't fit a phone and not much else because can you, what objects would you be able to fit in here that, that I guess big on this side and small on this side? I mean, you'd have to really split it in half and put your big stuff here and your small stuff there. Next up for bag number six, we have another Dior bag, and it is, again, a very, very popular recent release from Dior, and that is the Dior book tote. I think a lot of the points that I raised with the Louis Vuitton Neverfull are very, very applicable in this case, if not magnified. The size of this, I think they have varying different sizes in terms of this particular model. This is the GM, I think, size, which is the massive size. It would fit, like it says on the tin, all of your books, because that is the only thing I can imagine you carrying with a bag like this, because anything else, this bag is just too big. A lot of people, having said that, like to use this bag as kind of like a beach bag, but look, we're in COVID times right now. None of us are going to the beach, okay? Not unless you live near a beach already, in which case, lucky you, I'm jealous of that. But realistically, who just needs a dedicated beach bag? It's like, what are you bringing to the beach, darling? Like, you're in your bikini. You do not need to be bringing much more than that. Maybe a beach towel, but you don't need a Dior bag to put your beach towel. You're gonna get that bag nicked. And if you're not gonna get the bag nicked, you'll certainly get the stuff inside nicked because this bag, like with the Neverfall, is just an open cavity. Anybody can reach in and grab stuff. It doesn't have pockets. Again, like the Neverfall, you'd have to buy one of those inserts and organizers, which to be honest, it's not a point that I mentioned actually earlier, but I'll say it here because it's a similar style of bag. If you have to buy an insert for a bag, that means that the bag in question isn't doing its job of being a bag. Obviously I understand the role of bag organizers, especially for bags that are like Hermes bags, which you don't actually have the dual purpose of organizing, but also protecting your very precious bag. With a bag like this, that's meant to be like a beach bag, tote bag, on the go bag, 
I just think they, they could have just done a little pocket inside. That wouldn't have been that much more expensive. And this is also already an expensive bag. I think this goes for like three grand and it's completely fabric. Whereas at least the Neverfull has some leather details. Though having said that, I do think that they make a leather version of this bag, which I've, I've not heard any rave reviews about, to be quite honest. A lot of people get this fabric one. This is the most popular one. This is the one that is seen everyone on social media. It has been the one that has been super, super hyped. And it objectively looks like a nice looking bag, but it's just not practical in any way. And I'm a woman of practicality. I'm a woman of function. And apparently it's a very heavy bag without stuff in. So imagine if you do, like its namesake, put books inside this tote bag. How heavy is this gonna be? And then you put your bag organizer in it and everything like that. It's just not worth it. Just buy, bring a little wheelie case, bring a wheelie trolley, <laughs> or just get like a keeple bandulia, like I mentioned earlier, you know, that actually you can wear it over your shoulder, but you can't even really wear this apart from crook of your arm. You can't put it over your shoulder, especially in this big size. And then if you imagine the smaller sizes as well, like I don't even think you could put it under your arm actually. Uh, I think you'd only have to be able to carry it handheld. And I actually think that in the very, very small size, they've got a Tiggy size, which is, I don't even think it can fit or maybe it can just about fit an iPhone Max. For say for like two or three grand, it's just not worth that money. Um, not for something that is quite trendy at the moment. All right, so now we are on to bag number seven and we are moving on to Gucci, of which I also have two bags to share with you, keeping things very, very equal. And so this bag is one actually that is, it was very, very popular, uh, probably like four years ago. Um, and it, you know, it stayed strong for a couple of years since that point. But I think nowadays, as we fast forward into present day 2021, it's less, less so. That bag, if you haven't worked it out, is the Gucci Gigi Marmont bag. And if you remember, when Gucci had, I think, is it Alessandro Michel, who was the creative director that came on the scene and like rejigged everything in Gucci's collections, everything Marmont was buy it, it was lit. And I myself have a Marmont belt, which I love a lot and I still wear it. But in comparison to their bags, I feel like this Marmont bag is just very dated from that time that I mentioned that Gucci had their resurgence. I think everybody can remember this specific bag being related to that specific collection. And I think for that reason, it's not really been able to establish itself as a proper classic because since that point, Gucci's kind of died down in terms of a lot of their collections. They obviously keep releasing this particular bag. It is one of their most, I guess, like permanent and best performing bags in their collection. And I just cannot detach this bag from that particular hyped collection and how overdone it was. Again, very, very saturated. A lot of people had this. This is also a good looking bag, objectively speaking. It is very classic in its silhouette very very reminiscent actually of the chanel classic flap style to be honest no one really wears this bag anymore everybody that i have seen who have talked about this bag and you know love this bag years ago they've all sold these bags now so i think that in itself is just a sign of the times and maybe this bag will have a resurgence like the saddle bag in a few years to come but until that point where i see it coming back this bag is just not really worth necessarily investing in bag number eight now and like i mentioned before it's a gucci bag and i've got to be careful how i talk about this particular bag because my mum has this bag <laughs> but it is the gucci dionysus bag and i think the dionysus if i'm not mistaken came first chronologically before the gg marmont bag and Again, it's one of those bags that you just could not stop seeing anywhere. But honestly, if you think about it now, who has this bag still? Because of the way that it hit the scene in such a like massive way, I just think that in the same vein, you know, how you start is how you finish. And if you go in with a massive big bang, you go with a massive marketing campaign, you're probably gonna fizzle out because it's not necessarily organic. Obviously, like I mentioned, my mum has this bag but she doesn't have the monogram version. They did after this bag got a lot of um, demand and attention, they released the plainer versions with leather on it. And my mum specifically has this beautiful snakeskin, black snakeskin bag. Um, and although I'm still not a fan of the way the Dionysus bag looks, I think it's very, very, although it's classic looking, it's quite boxy, it's very rigid. Although it does look a bit better than this particular bag, 
still not great. Still not great, not my personal choice. But uh, I haven't really had the heart to tell her that this bag's no longer lit as it used to be. So I think I will, I will save her that pain. And she enjoys that bag a lot. And I think that's the takeaway, isn't it, for a lot of these bags. If you enjoy them a lot, it doesn't really matter what anyone else thinks. Now we are on to bag number nine. And it is a Fendi bag that I'm gonna be talking about. And it really pains me to talk about this particular bag because I actually bought this bag at Christmas and I returned it because I just wasn't really happy with it and I guess I will tell you the reasons why in just a second but let me tell you what bag that is first of all. It is the Fendi Baguette bag and it is a bag that I think has been quite constant in terms of its popularity over the years for Fendi. It's been a permanent fixture like the uh, Fendi Peekaboo, which I think is probably its most iconic bag. Recently it's had a big come up, in particular with the uh, vintage Zucker print bag. I actually think that particular bag is really, really nice. But in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about the leather one specifically because I had the experience with the leather one. It was a beautiful limited edition Joshua Vides bag. I noticed that the bag was just so delicate and so soft in the leather. I was just so terrified of color transfer or because it's also a beige colored bag in its base color that's gonna absorb anything. And that could probably lead to color bleeding as well. Not to mention if you were to get it out, God forbid, in the rain, what that would do to the bag. Something else I found about the leather, which wasn't really that appealing, was the fact that not only was it soft, but it was also really thin and it seemed to not really have any structure, even though it looked like quite a structured bag. And even in this picture of this blue bag here, it's it looks like it's got a bit of shape. In reality, the bag that I got, maybe it's just an outlier of the particular, you know, limited edition bag that I got. It's very, very soft leather. It just kind of caved in on itself. And also if we're talking about just general quality points, especially for the price actually, because it's not a cheap bag, it's like 2,500 or something like that. Um, the inside lining was not up to scratch. It was what I can only describe as crunchy sounding. <laughs> and with this one also, if we're just talking about the straps, with the top strap, it's not really big enough to put it under the crook of your arm. It also makes the bag pit in a little bit in the middle, which is not something you want, like a massive crease. And the big strap as well, not only was it just a bit too thick in terms of strap, it looked a bit clunky. I think they probably must would have done a bit better with like a metal chain, to be honest, or a thinner um, shoulder strap. But it also felt cheap. And I think that was kind of the theme of the particular bag that I got anyway. And now we have the final bag, bag number 10, to round off this video, and it is a bag from Valentino. Now, Valentino is a brand that I don't think I've really talked about on my channel before. I mean, I have their rock stud shoes, which I guess is the biggest, I guess, most popular Valentino item that they have in their collections but certainly their bags are less popular. I think that's probably for good reason because I don't really see anybody wearing them that much anymore. They had like a massive uh, boom about three years ago. We are talking, if you haven't guessed it already, about the Valentino Rockstud bag, which is a bag that I think is quite nice looking, but I think it's very evening in its look and its usage because of the rock studs. I think it's the fact that it kind of looks like glitter or Swarovski crystals, or just sparkles in general. I think it just lends itself more towards an evening event as opposed to day to day, because this is ultimately going to be your centerpiece for your outfit. One of the biggest things that put me off about this bag, and I don't know if I've just invented it or not in my mind, but this seems like a very feasible concern, at least for me as well, um, is the metal chain. The chain links on the strap are so, so small that I'm very concerned that it would get stuck. Um, in my hair and or vice versa my hair would get stuck in the chain because it's just such small links that I could just see it and I, oh, it makes me my skin crawl a little bit just thinking about it and that's why you see a lot of my bags in my collection in fact all of them I think are like big chunky chains or leather or a mixture of both you know I'd be keen to hear if any of you guys have experienced this problem or not if someone can verify for me that would be very very helpful i'd be curious to know those are the 10 bags that are extremely popular and hyped but i shan't be adding to my collection anytime soon if not ever so hope you enjoyed that video let me know your thoughts down below if you agree with the bags that are in this video or if you even have additions i'd love to know and anyway i will leave this video here thank you very much for watching and i will catch you in my next one